This is a vast and desolate world covered in vests. This story begins with the visit of Fushi, the great deity, to check the water meter. Mingyu is a Qingwan bird. Not long after being born, a great deity came to check the water meter and forced her to sign a contract of heaven and earth, selling the body contract, crossing it out, then the great god packed him and brought him back to Fengqi Mountain. Oh, it turns out that he is Fu Shi. So by the Wudong tree, the lady Nuwa is dressed in red. What happened when N Yuwa, holding the red embroidered heavenly knife, chased and chopped down Fu Shi, who could persuade, coerce and lure, 30.6 sacred people to sign the heaven and earth contract. Why is that Taoist so like Hong Yun? What kind of ghost is Ku's family living in Yunmeng days and Yunxia Dongtian? Is this Taoist, who has a clean face and envies others' innate spiritual treasures, really the spiritual treasure Heavenly Sovereign? Lingbao Heavenly Sovereign doesn't have Lingbao. What a joke! Mingyu, who was surrounded by a bunch of big shots, said that this vast wilderness is a bit different. Welcome everyone into my desolate world. Keywords of the novel Qingwan Bird of the Nuwa Family in the Flood and Wilderness with No Pop Ups, Complete Collection Download of Qingwan Bird of the Nuwa Family in the Flood and Wilderness, Latest Chapter Reading of Qingwan Bird of the Nuwa Family in the Flood and Wilderness. Chapter 1 Qingwan and Taoist. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 1 Qingwan and Taoist, before writing the main text. Paya, the Luan bird is called Harmony for the female and Luan for the male. Li Yun. In the local area, you can hear the sound of Luan harmony, covering all of this. In ancient times, the Luan river moved smoothly, and this bird flew and gathered on the carriage, with the male singing in front and the female responding in the back. In the center of the vast land, the mountains are towering and towering, towering and towering. To the southeast of Mount Bujo, there is a mountain called Fengqi. Within Fengqi Mountain, there is a valley, a lake in the valley, an island in the center of the lake, and a tree on the island. The only bird on the tree is just a picture. The tree in the center of the lake is like a pavilion, with lush branches and leaves, surrounded by the clear energy of life. The picture scroll on the tree, with the sun and moon flowing, interweaving the texture of the main road. A blue chick is lying on the tree. Its appearance is like that of Jai and its colorful writing is like that of one bird. And this chick is all green, resembling a phoenix, obviously a green phoenix. Xiao Qingwan's expression was a bit lackluster, occasionally glancing at the picture scroll beside him and muttering, It's been so long, why hasn't it improved yet? My small body is almost unable to hold up. This scroll is a picture of the sun and moon, a top dot grade innate spiritual treasure. Preliminary refining requires three prohibitions. Xia Qingluan has been trying to refine since 10,000 years ago. However, it may be due to insufficient realm or insufficient understanding of the inner Tao. Through countless years of hard work, only two innate prohibitions can be refined. This third prohibition, every time it comes close to the door, but it always cannot be overcome. Can't complete the preliminary refining, how can we go out and play with the great God? The great God only gave him 30,000 years of time. Feeling the helplessness of Xia Kingluan, a small branch extended out again, gently stroking the chick, continuing to comfort it and give it encouragement. So, the wisps of essence kept dissipating, gradually calming Xia Kingluan's tired mind and filling it with energy. I don't believe it anymore, young master. I can't handle you. Two on one, the advantage lies in me. What are you fighting me with this broken picture? Let's go, you. Mingyu launched a fierce attack, and the primordial spirit rushed into the sun and moon chart. Continue to comprehend its inner path and refine the third prohibition. Teenagers always have strong energy, which has lasted for nearly 30,000 years. For nearly 30,000 years of tireless contemplation and refinement, Mingyu's mind and spirit were exhausted. However, he also gained a little, and his state of being motionless for a long time began to loosen. And, 
It's almost there. The foot at the door has already taken half a step, just a little short. The branch reached out thoughtfully again, continuing to cheer on Mingyu. Feeling the life essence filled with all four limbs and bones, Mingyu sank her mind and continued to refine. He needs to work hard and unleash his soul. Finally, this day. On the island in the center of the lake, a scroll of images hangs in the sky, with the sun and moon constantly rising and shining brightly. Qingwan fluttered its feathers and flew, with a resounding harmony. At the same time, the phoenix perches on the main peak, in front of the cave, under the wudong tree. A Taoist suddenly opened his eyes and looked at the scene of the valley, praising, not bad. I saw him wearing a black Taoist robe, with ink hair like a waterfall, phoenix eyes sparse eyebrows, and a graceful demeanor. The mountain breeze gently brushed his sleeves, making him more and more elegant. After the sound of birds singing in the valley subsided, the bright light in the aerial map converged, and Mingyu opened the bird's beak and carried the sun and moon map into her belly. Although Qingwan is small, her belly has a sense of heaven and earth. This is his innate ability. The bright jade falls on the branch, with joy on the eyebrows. This time not only refined the third innate prohibition, but also directly refined it to the sixth path in one breath. Say one shot into the soul, one shot into the soul. Do what you say. While Mingyu was secretly happy, a branch skillfully extended over to give him some encouragement. Upon seeing this, Mingyu quickly dodged and said, All right, all right, life. I succeeded, thank you. He has broken several levels in a row, and now he is full of energy and in excellent condition. With just a little more energy, he can make up for it. Of course, without the assistance of the innate spiritual root of the tree of life, he knows how many more years it will take to complete the initial refinement. To show his gratitude, he lightly waved his wings, and the shimmering lake water rose as a pillar, converging in the air, and then turned into rain, like threads, gently tapping the leaves of the tree of life. Its sound was like a pearl entering the plate, like a song or a complaint. In an instant, all the innate spiritual energy in the lake gathered on the island, nourishing the tree of life. Although the tree of life is precious as an innate spiritual root, its spiritual intelligence has not yet opened up and only has a naive consciousness, like a newborn baby. The rich innate spiritual energy makes it very joyful, with its branches and leaves dancing in the rain, and its body filled with water vapor, emitting a strong vitality. Looking at the joyful tree of life, Mingyu stood alone at the treetop pondering. He is a soul that has traveled through later generations, blending with the first ray of blessings and vitality in the wilderness, transforming into a bird egg and becoming a green phoenix. In fact, his birthplace is not in Fengqi, but in the sun, moon, and cave. Just one day, a graceful Taoist appeared outside the sun-moon cave, swung the circle in his hand, threw it out, and directly blasted open the innate formation inside the cave. Then, one bird, one picture, and one tree arrived at Fengqi Mountain. At the thought of this, Mingyu couldn't help but complain. The great god has an extraordinary appearance, but his means are very rude. It's so useless to see such a beautiful bag. He was forced to enlightenment for three hundred years. Three hundred years. At this moment, a graceful figure appeared under the tree of life. Fushi Daoist stared at the little guy on the treetop with a smile on his face, flipping the tray up and down in his hand. Ming Yu Wu muttered to himself, however, the great deity is still very good. He introduced me to the Tao, taught me teachings, and taught me divine powers. His kindness is greater than heaven, and his righteousness is greater than insignificance. He can be called the most sacred of the times. Heaven and earth can tell, this is definitely Mingyu's true words, there is no doubt. The Taoist Fushi under the tree twitched his lips and turned his hand to retract the formation into his sleeve. He was truly defeated by this shameless little Qingwan. Is it possible to say that the first sacred thing in the wilderness is what? Can you keep a low profile? If you say this outside Fengqi, Believe it or not, you will die suddenly on the spot, 
he said angrily, he he, you're here, great God. Look, I've completed the preliminary refining ahead of schedule and my cultivation has also improved. Can we go out now? Mingya naturally shifted the topic and lightly fluttered his wings to approach Fushi, staring at the Taoist without blinking, hoping that he would fulfill his promise. Having been in the wilderness for so long, I haven't gone out yet to see the outside world. Upon hearing this, Taoist Fushi shook his head and said, I have reached a critical moment of breaking through the realm, so it is not advisable to travel far at this time. The little sister in Fushi's mouth is naturally in Yuwa. She has been in seclusion for 100,000 years since she failed to ascend the Zhou Wudao and returned. Ah, I'm so confused. The vast world is vast, how can I surpass the Empress? Mingyu said on the spot, what's beautiful outside Fengqi Mountain? The vast world is now in chaos, and he actually doesn't want to go out at all. And he said to go guard the door for the Empress now until she successfully exits the level. For Mingyu, who had a flexible stance, Fushi couldn't help but laugh or cry. A gust of wind blew and the graceful figure disappeared into place. Mingyu also quickly followed up. So, the phoenix perched on the main peak, outside the cave, a black dress leaned under the wudong to refresh itself, and a green phoenix nest dozed on the wudong. Please stay and read the following content to avoid affecting the viewing experience. Note 1. This article sets the timeline as the end of the dragon and phoenix catastrophe, with the coexistence of immortals and demons behind the scenes. Note 2. The immortal forces refer to the realms that have already emerged, such as Earth Immortal, Heavenly Immortal, Golden Immortal, Taiyi, Dalao, and Hunyuan. As Hongjun is not yet the founder of Taoism, the immortal realm at this time is only roughly divided and does not affect the plot. It will be detailed after the founder preaches. The titles of each ethnic group may vary, but the protagonist is currently an immortal power. Therefore, for the convenience of reading, other characters will generally follow the immortal realm. Note 3. The innate sacredness in this book generally goes through a complete stage of cultivation. Therefore, this article sets Jin Xian, asking questions. Tai Yi, seeking the way. De Luo, entering the way. Han Yuan, becoming the way. Note 4. Generally, the divine beings will have the ability to leave the cave of blessed land, novice village, and travel to the wilderness, wearing vests and wandering everywhere, when asking about the transformation of form, Pangu Daodi. Note 5. The protagonist is a childhood saint who was abducted before embarking on an outing. Details can be found outside of the series. Supplementary Note 6 Wan Yao is a race, and the protagonist is naturally raised, displaying the appearance of a green Wan. The gender is male. It can be considered as a foreshadowing, corresponding to the following text, but the author June never expected this to become a bad point. Big Fog, let me explain to my friends. Finally, it should be noted that the author June is actually a reader who has switched authors. Because the book was interrupted for a long time, the author came to write the book himself. There must be many shortcomings in a new book for newcomers who are learning while writing. If this leads to a lack of reading experience among book enthusiasts, the author apologizes and sincerely requests your understanding. Pink and cute new author, seeking collection, recommendation, and monthly pass. I hope all readers can give it a thumbs up. End of this chapter Chapter 2 Clearance and Greetings You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 2 Clearance and Greetings One person and one bird guarded outside the closed cave of Enyua. I don't know how long it has been. Maybe it's 10,000 years, maybe it's 20,000 years. Fushi, who was nourishing his mind, suddenly opened his eyes, flipped his left hand, took out the array, and pinched the seal with his right hand. The eight trigrams runes of Qian, Kuan, Li, Kan, Zhen, Dui, Sun, and Zhen flew out of the formation plate, dividing them into eight directions to reinforce the innate formation of Fengqi Mountain. 
Afterwards, a human-headed snake-shaped Dao elephant standing about a million zhang tall appeared above the main peak, holding a lotus lamp in its left hand, shining with divine radiance, holding a red sky blade in the right hand, the Dao 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 is dazzling. A large river flows from the void, with birds and animals dancing together inside, flowers, trees, fish, and insects are in the same row. This is the manifestation of the avenue of creation. It can be seen that the human head, snake body, and Taoist image in the air have undergone seventy changes, and then have been determined as the shape of the Pangu Taoist body, which is a human form. Immediately, the great river of creation returned to the ruins, and the divine, human, and Taoist phenomena dissipated. The gate of the cave, which had been closed for a long time, finally opened. Enyuwa walked gracefully, ironing her body in red clothes and dragging her skirt to the ground, the neck is slender and slender, with bright eyes and white teeth, her eyebrows are like emerald feathers, her muscles are like jade, her lips are like red lotus, and her immortal energy is born on her own. Pei Mingyu is incomparable to purity, and Qi Yulan cannot compete for fragrance. At the sight of Nuwa, Mingyu immediately abandoned Wudong as a humble house and Fushi as an open shoe. Taking the lead in flapping her wings and flying, she landed on Nuwa's fragrant shoulder and chattered to congratulate the Empress. Congratulations on breaking through the realm and entering Dalai, and becoming one of the great powers of the wilderness. There is no praise for Nuwa in the sky, only for Fengqi. Although, this is a fact. Madam, this is the gift I prepared for you. After speaking, Mingyu took out a jade slip and offered it to Nuwa. The projection of Fengqi Mountain appears on the jade slips, but it is very different from the current Fengqi. The phoenix in the projection, with pavilions and towers arranged in a neat and orderly manner, bridges and water pavilions complementing each other, the grand and majestic halls, and the unique charm of the forest garden. Compared to the monotonous Fengqi Mountain today, the architectural style of Jiangnan Gardens in later generations is elegant and highly in line with the aesthetic of Enyuwa. Even Fu Shi's eyes showed surprise. Enyuwa smiled beautifully and accepted the jade slip, saying with great interest, I am very satisfied with this gift. Tell me, what do you want this time? A gift given to someone must be sought after. The temperament of this little Qingluan is clear to her. Baoyan lamp. What kind of Baoyan lamp do you want? You're too polite, madam. Mingyu shamelessly shouted and kept her eyes fixed on Nyuwa. On hearing this, Fushi under the Wudong directly put his hand on his forehead. He didn't know this guy. Nyuwa's beautiful eyes rolled over, and she raised her hand and bent her fingers to flick the shameless bird off her fragrant shoulder. Dao said, Don't be greedy. I have not fully understood the innate spiritual light of the Baoyan lamp and its inherent path, so I cannot give it to you. The great road is endless, even if she has entered Dalai, she can only be said to be the starting point and end of the Tao. On the other side, compared to the current Nyuwa, it is still a bit far away. As a top dot quality innate spiritual treasure, the function of integrating attack and defense of the Baoyan lamp is not a big deal, mainly because of the great Tao it contains, which is now very beneficial to her. The little one is indeed a bit greedy. Mingyu didn't care about being bounced off, and laughed foolishly on the side. Just now, when Enyuwa fingered him, she also conveyed a message of enlightenment on the path of creation, which can be considered as a reward for him. The profound insight of the Luo Jingxian is simply priceless to him. Confirming oneself, enlightenment and breaking through boundaries are all helpful. Moreover, the Empress only said that she has not yet fully understood and cannot give, I didn't say I won't give it if I fully comprehend in the future. Keep working hard and you will surely succeed. When Mingyu cheered himself up, a big hand hit him and fanned him back to the Wudong tree. Fushi's graceful figure appeared in front of Enyuwa. Take out a jade hairpin and hand it to Enyuwa, Dao said, except for the formation plate and the chin, there is nothing else for my brother. This jade hairpin is a medium-grade innate spiritual treasure that I accidentally obtained while traveling through the wilderness. There is no way, 
this is the era of the three innate clans. The great powers of the three clans at the level of the Dalai Lama are unknown, and the unowned innate spiritual treasures in the wilderness cannot be found or have been plundered by the powerful members of the three clans. Fushi's chance encounter with a medium-grade innate spiritual treasure is truly extraordinary in terms of luck. Of course, one picture, one tree, one bird counts separately. Later, Fushi offered sacrifices to the eight trigrams array. Thousands of heavenly and earthly treasures gushed out, instantly piling up like mountains, including innate spiritual materials. I can see the bright jade on the woodong tree drooling. I think those buildings are very satisfactory. They were picked up by chance for my brother to walk through the wilderness, and all of them are for you to build. Fushi pointed to the picked up heavenly and earthly treasures and gestured for Enyuwa to accept them. Since my elder brother is also interested, I'll take action now. Please wait and see. Enyuwa smiled sweetly, Fengxi Mountain changed with the sound, and the heavenly and earthly treasures flew in response to the sound. Subsequently, Enyuwa pinched the seal with both hands, causing the Tao of Creation to fluctuate and form a three-legged and two-eared great cauldron of creation in the air, with a faint vibration of the universe. Take out the lotus lamp, gently blow at the embroidery mouth, and the innate divine fire in the lamp rushes straight towards the big cauldron, while the heavenly and earthly treasures enter the cauldron one by one. Not long after, the pavilions and towers in the jade slips, as well as the corridors and bridges in the forest, appeared one after another, orderly scattered among the Fengqi mountains. Those buildings, one after another, are all shining with precious light, and the texture of the avenue of creation is intertwined. At this time, Fushi also joined the construction industry. He created various array patterns and engraved formations on these buildings, adding attack, kill, and defense abilities to these buildings that not only have aesthetic charm but also have fun in daily life. After all, tranquility and beauty have never been the main color scheme of the wilderness, and constant struggle is the norm of the wilderness. The two De Luo Jin immortals personally performed the Tao and cast spells, and such opportunities are rare and hard to come by. A series of operations make it clear that the jade eyes are too busy to take care of, wishing for a few more pairs of eyes. When a certain Qingwan in the Taoist temple was bleeding from its eyes and had a headache that was about to crack, the construction project was finally completed. At this moment, a mysterious yellow energy descended from the sky, and the heavenly way rewarded merit. Three parts of merit and virtue fall within the architectural complex, three parts are given to Enyuwa, two parts are given to Fu Shi, and the remaining two parts are evenly distributed between Jade Slips and Ming Jade. The Jade Slips thus leapt into the spiritual treasures of postnatal merit, although only inferior. At the moment when their merits declined, they understood. This type of architectural complex is actually the first time it has appeared in the world since the birth of the Heavenly Way, and it contains both the ways of creation and formation. Therefore, Heaven bestows merit and virtue. After Fushi and Niuwa accepted the unexpected happiness with Lingbao, they both stared at Zia Kingluan on the Wutong. Staring at Mingyu made her scalp tingle. This was completely an accident, it was an accident, and I didn't expect the heavenly way to be so generous. He closed his eyes, pretended to be foolish, and firmly refused to admit that it was his intention. It also indicates that this is entirely the credit of the Empress and the Great God, this is a fact. Anyway, he is a bird with no emotion on his face, and he is not afraid that both of them can see what they are thinking through their expressions. Fushi and Enyuwa were too lazy to investigate the situation. Moving one step at a time into the new main peak hall, after which one begins the legendary masterpiece of the great gods of the wilderness. The Discourse of the Tao Qin Yun rises in the main hall, and three flowers emerge. As the two began to preach, the sky was in disarray for a moment, and golden lotus bloomed on the ground, causing various phenomena to evolve one after another. Let Mingyu, who came closely behind, listen as if he was intoxicated. The mountain spirits and wild monsters of Fengqi gathered under the main peak, jumping and jumping, which was their most joyful moment. 
For the argument on merit in this article, please move to the comments section of the book circle. The author has had a discussion with the book friend, if there is love in heaven, it is also old. Dot. Recommend tickets. Add favorites. Oh, the reader is so polite. Jun Ting blinked at the passing reader. End of this chapter. Chapter 3 An Old Way Comes to Funchi Mountain, 3K Characters You are listening at novelfull.audio. The source has no content or has errors. Chapter 4 The End of the Mountain, the First, 3K Characters You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 4 The End of the Mountain, the First, 3K Characters, Phoenix Perches on the Main Peak, on the Wudong Tree. The startled Chingluan bird watched as the red robe entered the hall, and after the door slammed shut, it breathed a long sigh of relief. Nyu Wa went to seclusion again. She went to consolidate this harvest. The 30.6 innate forbidden maps of mountains, rivers, and kingdoms. How dangerous! Two voices sounded simultaneously, as if there were lingering palpitations in the heart. Under the Wudong tree, the dry character suddenly appeared, and Fushi walked out of the empty sky. At this moment, he changed back into a black Taoist robe, but the formation plate was still held in his left hand. After confirming that Enyu Hua was truly in seclusion, Fu Shi retracted the formation into his sleeve and walked slowly with a somewhat contented demeanor. But his slightly messy ink hair honestly declared how embarrassed he had been before. As soon as Mingyu saw Fu Shi, he was about to vent his anger on him. I'm going out of the mountain, do you want to follow me? Fu Shi quickly smoothed out his rebellious hair, his graceful figure reappeared, and turned to ask Qingwan on the tree. The little one has entered the heavenly realm, with a slightly larger body size and more slender tail feathers. It looks a bit handsome. The only downside is that the cultivation level is still too low, otherwise taking it out would be a good means of transportation and riding. Mingyu, who was unaware of her low cultivation and had temporarily escaped the fate of being a mount, struggled to swallow the divine fire that she wanted to spew out. He he chuckled twice and decisively flew onto Fushi's shoulder. Let's go. Let's go, urged repeatedly, afraid that Fushi would turn back. Fushi turned his head and glanced at the tightly closed palace door, then led the Chingwan bird and drifted away with the gentle breeze. I only heard a crisp phoenix crow swaying in the mountains, gradually melodious, melodious high, very high. Big, big. Wide, very wide. The distance from Mount Bujo is unknown, and Mingyu stood on Fushi's shoulder, deeply realizing what Tianzhu is and what greatness is. He has never felt his own insignificance like he does now. This vast and ancient sacred mountain, towering above the heavens and reaching down to the earth, with its great power covering all directions. Even though it was thousands of miles away, and even with the blessing of Fushi, Mingyu still felt an irresistible pressure. That is Pangu's spine, it is a manifestation of the will of the Lord of the World. Do you know who is the first divine to ascend to the brink of chaos? Mingyu stood on Fushi's shoulder, but he felt that the voice came from afar, a bit erratic, and he didn't even hear it too clearly. What? Mingyu felt a bit uncomfortable in her throat, and his voice was a bit awkward. It's Hongjun. Fushi whispered three words, like the sound of spring thunder. Now Mingyu heard it clearly, somewhat surprised, but felt it was reasonable. Fengqi Mountain is located in the southeast of Buzhou. At that time, Fu Shi and En Yuwa had not yet transformed into form, and only had the cultivation of the Golden Immortal. The two of them meditated at Fengqi Mountain. Occasionally, there was a slight vibration coming from the direction of the mountain, followed closely by strands of imposing pressure. You should know that for millions of years before this, although the vast and majestic pressure of Mount Bujo was heavy, it remained stable within a certain range without showing any trace. But at that time, strands were exposed. At that moment, Mount Bujo seemed to have the will of Pangu once again, majestic, domineering, eternal, and supreme. 
And all of this is because an old Taoist climbed the mountain. At that time, the old Taoist was wearing sandals, holding a wooden staff, and withstanding the towering pressure of Mount Bujo, walking up step by step. The closer you get, the greater the pressure, the closer to the mountaintop, the heavier the pressure. So the old Taoist walks slowly and steadily. The heavier the pressure, the more steadily he walks. The old Taoist walked for three thousand years. He has finally reached the summit. At the moment he ascended to the summit, there was no chorus of voices, no extravagance, and no heavenly congratulations. Some are just the confirmation of the lack of Zhou Shan, while others are only the sublimation of one's own path. Seemingly silent, but capable of earth shattering, just because he is number one. Firstly, there are always rewards and licenses. Undoubtedly, the old Taoist was the first to reach the summit, gaining recognition from Mount Bujo and the Pangu Avenue, and rightfully receiving the gift from Pangu. So, since reaching the summit, the old Taoist who was already standing tall has become even higher. Of course, he didn't completely know about these fushi, he only knew that there was a divine summit that day that was not appropriate. Even he didn't know at the time that it was Hong Jun who had reached the summit. But when the old Taoist first walked into Fengqi Mountain, he knew. This is also the main reason why Fuxi and Yuwa decisively joined the Xiandao camp and spared no effort in planning and dedicating herself wholeheartedly. So, do you still want to climb Mount Zhou now? Fu Xi asked you seriously. In fact, before Hong Jun, there were many creatures who could not ascend to Zhou Tianzhu. On the contrary, there were many more since him. However, so far, only a few hands have been able to reach the summit. Anyone who reaches the summit is always a strong individual, like an ancient ancestor, like an ancestral dragon, like a phoenix ancestor, like a Chilin ancestor, and also like the leader of the demon path. Luo Gui Fushi didn't originally want to miss Zhou Shan so soon. He has been here before and has also registered. Although he did not reach the summit, he also gained a lot. After returning to Fengqi, he broke through the great Luo and entered the ranks of great powers. It can be said that Mount Bujo is his place of enlightenment. He is like this, and Yuwa is like this, and most great powers in the wilderness are like this. This is a gift from Pangu, the creator god, to all the creatures in the wilderness, and also a guardian of the wilderness. So Mingyu wanted to come, so Fushi brought him along. It's a perfect opportunity for him to witness the majesty of the Lord of the World and feel how high and large Pangu Avenue is. Mingyu has now truly felt these. Upon hearing Fu Shi's question, Mingyu felt her throat become even drier. Unable to speak for a long time. It's not that he's scared, it's because Zhou Shan is too high and Pangu Avenue is too high. Denver how can one truly experience the path of Pangu without climbing the heavenly pillar? Fushi is a great deity, isn't Pangu also a great deity? Fushi's shoulder young master can now stand, climb Pangu's spine. What's wrong? After Mingyu's successful self-strategy. Opening my mouth and spitting, the sun and moon scroll unfolds, and the sun and moon path image hangs above my head. Turning his head to signal Fushi, he opened the barrier and was about to start. Looking at Mingyu with the sun and moon above her head, Fushi's eyes, which were originally very serious, showed a hint of disbelief, but then turned to a hint of disdain. Looking at Mingyu, it seems like she's saying, Are you planning to climb the mountain with your innate spiritual treasure? Mingyu felt the familiar gaze and felt as if she had seen it for the first time. He was a bit confused but it didn't affect his interpretation of Fu Shi's gaze. After all, once born, twice ripe. Then, Fu Shi told Mingyu a cruel fact. Amidst the wilderness, there is no one who can climb the mountains without carrying a spiritual treasure. Are you insulting Pangu or burying yourself for not being able to climb up properly under the guise of Lingbao? Hong Jun had a habit of leaning on a dragon head and a cane, and when climbing the mountain, he casually cut off a wooden stick. After hearing this, Mingyu remained silent for a long time and slowly opened her mouth to ask, 
can I be considered the number one in the world like this? Upon hearing this, even though Fushi knew that Mingyu had a thick skin, he couldn't resist it. You don't want face, I want face from Fushi. Unable to bear it anymore, Fushi flipped his left hand and grabbed the sun and moon chart in his hand. Then he waved his sleeve and fanned the shameless Qingwan bird out. Unfortunately, it didn't fly far, and Mingyu was firmly photographed on the ground under the pressure of Pangu Avenue. Mingyu, lying on the ground, slowly stood up and attempted to lightly tap her wings again for flight. As a result, both wings are as heavy as Mount Taishan Mountain, so it is hard to shoot, let alone fly. How can this work? This place is still millions of miles away, not even touching the foot of the mountain. Mingyu was ruthless in her heart, and she meditated directly on the Tao. The primordial spirit detached from her body, and the Tao image became apparent. A super handsome large Qingwan phantom appeared on Mingyu's head, carrying the blue sky. In his left eye, the sun and moon coexist, while in his right eye, a tree of life shines brightly. Mingyu tried again, but stumbled and stumbled, but fortunately, she finally took off. He looked in the right direction and headed straight ahead. The heavier the wings, the slower the flying speed. Approaching less than one zhang, Qingluan's back carries an additional weight of pressure, approaching ten zhang, the shadow of the large Qingluan becomes slightly dim. One after another, the heavy pressure almost suffocated Mingyu. The phantom gradually dimmed, while the radiance in Mingyu's eyes grew brighter and brighter. At a distance of 10,000 miles from Mount Buzhou, the phantom finally couldn't hold on and withdrew from Mingyu's body. He also stopped flying. This is already his flight limit. If you can't fly, then walk over. Mingyu rested for a moment, took a step forward, braved the pressure of the main road, and walked step by step towards Buzhou Mountain. On the vast land, only a Qingguan struggled to move forward, with a long chain of claw marks behind it. Feeling the layers of pressure on his body, Mingyu Yuanshan once again emerged from his body. This time, it's not about taking responsibility, but about experiencing and touching. Understand the path of Pangu and come into contact with his will. The physical body slowly walks on the earth, while the primordial spirit flies in the air. Of course, I dare not fly too high, as being too high can easily crush me to death. Step by step, step by step understanding. Mingyu seemed to have returned to the time when Pangu was towering above heaven and earth. Muddy and turbid qi is trampled on the soles of the feet, and pure and pure qi hangs high above the head. Qingqi is not light at all. It is not only heavy, but also increasingly heavier. It doesn't want to hang high, it wants to align with the earth, it wants to return to chaos, it wants to overpower giants. But as it grows heavier, the giant also grows larger, it is sinking day by day, but the giant is growing taller. Hands support the sky, feet touch the earth. The giant stop will last for thousands of years. Even if his body eventually falls, his spine is still standing firm. Unconsciously, Mingyu, who had entered a state of mystery, unexpectedly arrived at the foot of Bujo Mountain and began to climb upwards. Yes, the four bodies are on the ground, and climbing with the cultivation of the heavenly realm is not appropriate. Although his climbing speed was like that of a turtle, it also made Fu Shi, who was following behind, stare slightly. The Mingyu turtle in front is crawling at high speed, and Fu Shi in the back is also following suit at high speed. In the end, Fushi stood still at a height of about 3,000 zhang, and in front of him, the Qingluan bird lay motionless. He stopped. After waiting for a while, Fushi walked forward and gently picked up the Qingluan bird, placing it on his shoulder. Turning around and walking down poorly. God, can I be considered the number one in the world like this? Mingyu murmured in confusion. Calculate. Fu Shi spoke loudly. In the early days of the heavenly realm, one's cultivation reached 3,000 zhang without reaching the Zhou level. Even if this height is less than 1 billion times that of Tianzhu, it is enough to be called the number one in the world. 
He 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 he, Mingyu, who was in a coma, received recognition from Fushi and let out a few silly smiles. P.S. The author needs tickets from friends. How can we live without tickets? Ah ah ah, after coding, I wanted to squint for a while before sending it, but ended up falling asleep, end of this chapter. Chapter 5 Dinghai Shinju You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 Dinghai Shinju to the east of Mount Buzhou lies an unnamed wilderness. A handsome Chingwan bird soars freely in the sky. Sometimes soaring into the sky, dancing with the white clouds, sometimes returning to the wilderness, parallel to the earth. From high to low, from the heart, from front to back with ease, feeling uncomfortable. The graceful Taoist looked at Mingyu, who was gradually becoming complacent, but did not stop him from having fun. Since you have obtained a first place, it is acceptable to indulge in some irrational behavior. But sometimes parents can indulge their own teenagers, and heaven may not spoil their naughty children. Well, Mingyu, who was full of joy, unexpectedly bumped into a large formation head. On directly hitting Mingyu made her feel dizzy and dizzy. Not finished yet, a sword light came rushing towards Mingyu, as fast as lightning. Mingyu quickly flapped her wings, while Chingwan swiftly exerted herself to the extreme, avoiding both danger and danger. Unexpectedly, one miss is another blow. Sword light struck again, this time not one path, but two, three, ten, and ten million paths. The sword light in the sky was like rain, piercing through the space and pouring down, leaving Mingyu with no way to escape. Mingyu's eyes were solemn, and the radiance of the sun and moon flowed in her eyes. He had wings like knives, and then tried his best to cut towards the sky. Two incredibly large heavenly knives suddenly appeared, carrying a powerful and powerful momentum to face thousands of sword lights. The collision between knives and swords, and the collision between Dao and Dao. The result is that thousands of sword lights shatter and two heavenly knives still exist, and they forge ahead in the void. A young man holding a long sword, with a jade seal on his head, dressed in white, was forced out, his face slightly gloomy. Ha ha ha, Chilin Cub, can you do it? In the middle stage of the Golden Immortal, you can't win a mixed haired bird in the later stage of the heavenly realm. In the nearby void, another young man emerged. He was dressed in earthy yellow clothes, playing with a small mirror in his right hand, and the two forked small horns on his head were shining brightly. Upon hearing these words, the Chilin boy's face turned black again, and there were faint veins rising on his forehead. He he, why aren't you talking? Where did that fierce energy go just now? The boy in yellow continued to sneer with his lips. He was overjoyed to see his opponent collapse. My father doesn't want me to waste too much time with the underdeveloped dragon cubs. The Chilin boy didn't show weakness and retorted. These words were even sharper than the sword in his hand, piercing directly into the heart of the young man in yellow. The yellow-clothed boy left in anger. Son of a bitch, can you see clearly that this dragon is not fully developed? Ah! This is a noble bloodline, do you understand? The Kirin boy, who was demoted to a dog, had no expression on his face. He ignored the jumping dragon cub and instead stared at Mingyu. The boy in yellow didn't bother anymore when he saw the Chilin cub ignoring him. Also turn your gaze to Mingyu. I knew that no matter what good things happened, the Phoenix tribe would never be missing. The little miscellaneous bird is here, and the old miscellaneous bird is probably here too. He doesn't have a good impression of the Chilin and won't be too polite to the Fong tribe, his words are all derogatory. Obviously, the boy in yellow mistakenly identified Mingyu as a member of the Phoenix tribe. In fact, this is also the reason why the Chilin boy acted as soon as he saw Mingyu. He and his two clans have simultaneously discovered a high dot quality innate spiritual treasure that is about to take shape and are facing off. At this moment, the appearance of a green phoenix is difficult to avoid misunderstandings between the two sides. Upon hearing the conversation between the two, Mingyu immediately understood that she had taken the blame for the Fong tribe. Just thinking about it, 
one of the five major branches of the Fong tribe is the Chimuan tribe. He saw that the two had no intention of fighting again and decisively returned to Fuxi's side. The two teenagers did not pursue as expected. Then he saw Fuxi standing still in place. In fact, not only Mingyu was targeted, but Fuxi also encountered two great powers. Black Dragon King Tsang Xian and White Qilin Bai Hain are both cultivators of the seven heavenly realms of the Great Luo. Although their cultivation was higher than that of Fuxi, none of them took any action. They just hid in the void, using their elemental spirit to lock Fuxi while waiting for the spiritual treasure to form. Fuxi felt the power of the primordial spirit on his body. After blinking and thinking for a moment, without much resistance, Lei Mingyu stood quietly on the side waiting. Mingyu didn't know why, but she also stood quietly on his shoulder. Perhaps Fuxi was too quiet, which made Sang Xian and Bai Heng feel suspicious. Due to the completion of the spiritual treasure in the formation, they still did not take action. But both of them coincidentally recruited their own young men and were on guard. Days passed in a blink of an eye. Within the wilderness formation, three pearls are arranged in a finished shape. They seem to be dissatisfied with the loneliness of being trapped for millions of years, emitting brilliant divine light, with the power to break through mountains and rivers. Then waves sounded, and three bright pearls shone in the air, revealing a vast ocean. The sea occasionally stirred up huge waves. Dinghai Shinju at the moment when the Lingbao was formed, the names of these three pearls came to mind in the minds of those present. The three great experts never expected it to be this thing. You should know that there are 30.6 complete Dinghai divine beads, which are top.notch innate spiritual treasures with the effect of suppressing qi circulation. Zulong had 20.4 in his hand, constantly searching for the other divine pearls, but he never found them. A big hand took the lead in poking out of the void, flipping its palm and breaking through the formation, directly grabbing the sea god pearl. With a cold snort, the terrifying sword light carried a killing intent and instantly cut open the giant palm. Immediately after, the character text, Ken, shot out, and a large river rushed towards the divine pearl. Fushi held a formation plate and used the path of water to pull the spiritual treasure. Playing water in front of my dragon tribe. Joke. Roar. The dragon's chant resounds through the heavens and earth, and suddenly there are changes in the wind and clouds. Thousands of waves come from the sky, and the sound is like thunder. The vast ocean water pressure the river again, a spray rolled up to calm the sea god bead, padded towards the dark. Baihang swung his sword again, with a sword energy spanning 30,000 miles, and unexpectedly cut off the vast waves, causing three divine pearls to fall from the air. At this moment, he stepped forward to catch the Lingbao. I saw a sudden appearance of the eight trigrams rune above by Heng's head, forming a formation in eight directions and trapping him for a moment. Fushi's graceful figure appeared before the Dinghai divine pearl, and he grabbed it. Under the astonished gaze of Bai Heng and Sang Xian, he shook his hand and threw it towards Tsang Xian. Then he disregarded it, pinched the array, looked in a direction, and left with Mingyu breaking through the air. As soon as Fushi left, four large flags appeared out of nowhere in the wilderness. The big flag faces the wind fiercely, emitting a towering black aura to block the void. A large formation was pulled down like a lid, firmly trapping the remaining people. Under the four banners stood a black robe. Looking in the direction of Fushi's departure, the black robe under the eastern flag spoke up and asked, Do you want to chase after him? The array in his hand is quite extraordinary, and it is likely to be an innate spiritual treasure. No need, let him go. First, take down the big fish inside. It's important to complete the task above, not missing this spiritual treasure, and the Phoenix clan's departure is in line with my intentions. Western Black Robe spoke. Di Yu naturally refers to Tsang Xian and Bai Heng. Among the two, one is the son of Qing Long, the second ancestor of the dragon family, and the other is the son of Qilin ancestor. If all of them died here, 
the three tribes that had just stopped fighting not long ago would probably have another dispute. So, the four black robes vigorously shook the flagpole together. For a moment, within the formation, a black aura filled the air, and the killing intent froze. End of this chapter. Chapter 6 Heartbeat, Strike Whoever Is Weak You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 6 Heartbeat, Strike Whoever Is Weak Within the Formation, Sang Xian and Bai Hang stood opposite each other. Two teenagers have already been taken into the Lingbao space by both of them. Sang Xian frowned and looked at the increasingly strong black energy in the formation, feeling that his magic was constantly losing. He offered the dragon ball in his hand and placed it in front of him to form a light curtain to isolate the black air. Seeing Bai Hang's head hanging with a big seal, he remained invincible and continued to approach him with his sword. Sang Xian felt a little anxious and said, Bai Hang, since the Dinghai Divine Pearl has now reached my hands, it must be the virtue of my dragon clan, and we should abide by it. At present, the enemy is at hand. It's better to put aside the matter between our two clans for now and work together to defend the enemy as the right path. Bai Hang ignored, with a cold expression on his face, and continued to approach with his sword. Bai Hang, are you willing to die at the hands of a petty thief behind the scenes for the sake of spiritual treasures? Sang Xian shouted sternly. Bai Hang still ignored and raised his sword to stab. Sang Xian cursed inwardly. He gritted his teeth and said, One. Bai Hang stood still, his long sword remained steadfast. Bai Hang, don't go too far. Seeing Bai Hang's long sword still held up, Sang Xian stomped his foot, Dao. 2. Otherwise, we'll bury our bones here together. Deal. Bai Hang immediately put down his long sword, spread his hand, and his face showed no signs of coldness. His eyebrows and eyes were clearly smiling. Seeing this, Sang Xian couldn't understand that he had been deceived by the elm head in front of him. He cursed and threw out two divine beads. In a life that threatening situation, still playing tricks here, this guy is tough enough. Bai Hang grabbed the divine pearl and let Sang Xian break his mouth. The Dinghai divine pearl is of great use to the ancestral dragon's enlightenment, and we must not let the dragon clan gather a complete set. The two just finished their dispute and shook hands to make peace. The black air suddenly rolled around, and the protective light curtain of Tsang Xian Bai Hang was being penetrated by it. The sound of magic echoed in his ears, causing a slight tremble in the hearts of the two people, causing Tsang Xian Bai Hang's face to change. We can't delay any longer. They looked at each other and attacked the main formation. Tsang Xian let out a dragon's roar, shaking the eight poles. His powerful and domineering fist marks bombarded the formation, as if they were about to shatter the space. Bai Hang occasionally swung his sword, his sword energy as fast as lightning, slashing in all directions. The Sky Sword Chi Fist Seal has been attacking the main formation for a long time. East. Fist and sword energy converged at one point, and they all attacked towards the east together. Outside the formation, the figure of Dongfang Hypo swayed, and he could hardly hold the big flag in his hand. The western black robe cursed, waste. Dongfang Hypo's emotions were unbearable. With a cold snort, a demon seed appeared and in an instant, it grew into a two Zhang tall tree. The aura of the eastern black robe rises step by step with the appearance of the big tree, and the cultivation reaches from the sixth level of the Great Luo to the eighth level of the Great Luo. He regained his footing, grabbed the big flag, and waved vigorously, bridging the soon-to-be-breached formation once again. Great God, are those black-robed guys from the demon faction? I shouldn't be wrong. In the void thousands of miles away from the vast array in the wilderness, there stands a graceful Taoist standing still, with a handsome Qingwan bird standing on his shoulder. As early as he approached the wilderness formation, Fushi noticed someone watching in the void. At first, he thought it was the great power of the dragon and Chilin tribes, but when he was competing for the divine pearl, he found that the surrounding space was shrouded in confinement. 
Sun Xian and Bai Heng did not react. As a great expert in the formation, how could Fu Shi sit idly by and wait for death? Seize the opportunity and immediately flee. As for why he came back again Fu Shi silently looked around at the void. Seeing Fu Shi staring at a place in the air for a long time without speaking, Mingyu also focused his gaze on the divine light and looked over. After watching for a while, there was still nothing. Suddenly, a sound came into my ears. This Chilin is good, and the sword cultivation of the Chilin clan is not entirely useless. A voice was guiding the country, and in his words, he seemed to have a strong disdain for the Kirin clan sword cultivator. Brother Dao has a very high vision. How many people can enter your eyes on the sanctity of practicing swordsmanship in the vast wilderness? A very warm voice makes one feel like basking in spring breeze. I think there seems to be a bit of a way to cultivate demons in the heart taught by this demonic way. A calm voice turned the conversation to the black robe. In the nearby void, three figures stood side by side. A person dressed in a blue Taoist robe, with sword eyebrows and starry eyes, and a tall and upright figure, one was dressed in a red robe, tied with a red gourd around his waist, and had a friendly face, the other is tall and dressed in bright yellow clothes, with a strong aura. The three of them noticed Fu Shi's return, but seemed invincible to him and did not avoid talking to each other, so much so that Yu Mingyu also heard him. Hey, two Taoist brothers, wait and see reminded the Taoist in red. Changes have occurred again in the formation. Originally, Tsang Xianbai could not break through for a long time, and his body consumed a huge amount of mana. His Dao heart was disturbed by the magic sound, and his breath was unstable. The two looked at each other again and directly changed their original appearance. The head is like a cow, the horns are like a deer, the eyes are like shrimp, the ears are like elephants, the neck is like a snake, the belly is like a mirage, the scales are like fish, the claws are like phoenixes, and the palms are like tigers. A green giant dragon soars into the sky, with rolling clouds and thunder accompanying it, lion head, deer antler, tiger eye, elk body, dragon scale, ox tail. A white jade chilin steps on the ground, with auspicious clouds under its feet and a dark yellow sky. A giant dragon and a unicorn, carrying a myriad of power, are attacking towards the east of the formation. They believe that the east is still the weakest. Bang! With a loud bang, the big formation shook, and the eastern black robe retreated, and the big flag took off. As the Chilin and the dragon were about to escape, the western black robe roared loudly, don't leave your hands, do your best. Surprisingly, the four black robes still have a hand left. The three black robes of the south, north, and west each sacrificed a demon seed and also spurred it to become a big tree, along with the black robe of the east four black robes and four big trees are connected in breath, together driving the big flag. Amidst the rolling black aura emanating from the flag, four fierce beasts appeared. Four fierce beasts roared low and slowly entered the formation, surrounding Tsang Xian Bai Heng. The fierce beast of the east, resembling a dog in shape, with long fur and four legs, resembling a bear's bottom but without claws, with eyes but not looking, with two ears but not hearing, is chaotic, southern ferocious beast, with a tiger-like appearance, wings on its back, and a barking sound like a dog, this is extremely strange, western ferocious beast, with a tiger-like appearance and dog fur, two feet long and a tail length of one foot and eight feet, is also known as this spear, a fierce beast in the north, shaped like a sheep's body in a human face, with its eyes under its armpits, tiger teeth and human claws, and its sound like that of a baby, making it a gluttonous beast. For a moment, the Chilin dragon and the four evil men fought together. The giant dragon sways its tail, and its chants cannot eliminate evil spirits, the Chilin steps on its hooves, and the rolling clouds cannot ward off evil spirits. The situation is precarious. Two Taoist brothers, can we just ignore it like this? It's not time to trigger a major war among the three tribes yet, the demon side is anxious. In the void, the warm red-clothed Taoist spoke. 
After all, the immortal and demon camps belong to the heavenly Tao forces, so we may not be good at taking action, said the calm Taoist. The Taoist in Qingyi pondered for a moment, then shook his sleeve as if something had fallen out. He looked surprised and said, Ah, why did the sword energy drop? I must be more careful next time. Upon hearing this, the two of them twitched their lips and immediately realized. Silently shaking their sleeves, two streams of light accidentally fell from each other's sleeves. A sword aura slashed towards the big tree in the east, directly cutting it off with a waist, and the eastern black robe instantly fell in cultivation. Two streams of light simultaneously hit the body of the Dongfang black robe, causing both people and flags to fall from the air. If three Taoists don't make a move, it's already a killing move. The black-robed men were caught off guard, their intertwined breath interrupted, the trees beside them withered, the formation dissipated, and all four fierce beasts collapsed. The giant dragon Chilin, covered in scars all over his body, seized the opportunity to soar into the sky. Fushi Mingyu, along with the three Taoist priests, disappeared from the void. Leave behind three uncontrollable anger and a black robe of unknown life and death. Thank you to every book friend who passes by. If you feel like you can continue reading, just bookmark it. It would be great if you could have a recommendation ticket. End of this chapter. Chapter 7 Daoist Friends, Please Stay You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 7 Daoist Friends, Please Stay, Master Upon hearing those three words from the shadows just now, they should be from the immortal sect and don't seem invincible. Why don't you recognize each other? Mingyu stood on Fushi's shoulder and asked in confusion. The time has not arrived. Fushi's words had just finished. I heard a call coming from behind. Friend Dao, please stay. The voice was warm, but it scared Mingyu so much that she exploded. As is well known, these words of tiger and wolf can be said to be the first weapon of the times. In the great apocalypse of Fengshen, Shen Gongbao used this sentence to make countless immortals bear the fate. Looking at the excited Mingyu, Fushi was somewhat puzzled and turned to look at the person coming. Qingyi, Hongyi, and Ming Huangyi are the three Taoists who accidentally dropped something just now. I am the lord of the Red Cloud Cave, Yun Zhongjuan. I have met my fellow Taoist. The red-clothed Taoist, with a gourd tied around his waist and a warm voice, spoke first. I am the Lord of the Blessing and Longevity Cave, the immortal Taoist. I have met my fellow Taoist. The tall and imposing Taoist then said. I am the Lord of the Yuchen Blessed Land, a Taoist from Yuchen. I have met my fellow Taoist. The Taoist in green, with a twinkling star-like aura, raised his sword eyebrows slightly. Unexpectedly, the three of them reported their names and origins as soon as they arrived. Mingyu, who was still speculating on the specific identities of the three people before, was somewhat puzzled when she heard the first two names, but when she heard the word Yu Chen, her heart moved. Is it that one? And Fushi was also secretly calculating the true origins of the three of them. It's actually true. Fushi remained calm and spoke slowly Dao said, I am the master of the sun, moon, and cave, a Taoist named Fengxi. I have met three Taoist friends. Upon hearing this, Mingyu was taken aback again. He remembers that the contract he signed was clearly a cooperation contract, not a sales contract. It's not a sales contract. It's true. Three Taoist priests simultaneously moved their hearts. Of course it's true, the key to the sun and moon cave. The sun and moon diagram. Is still in Fushi's sleeve. That's right, maybe I was too excited. Before climbing Mount Buzhou, I left the sun and moon map with Fushi, but Mingyu forgot to ask Fushi for it. As for whether Fushi also forgot to return Mingyu, it remains to be discussed. Have you ever heard of the Immortal Paths contract with heaven and earth? Yun Zhong Jun spoke again and called Mingyu little friend. Two familiar nouns were spoken. Later, without waiting for Fushi to respond, 
he enthusiastically introduced them to what the Xiandao faction was and what the Sodot called Tiandi contract was. It has to be said that the business ability of the god of flood and wilderness is extremely strong. Yun Zhongjuan's words were sincere, well dot organized, to the point, and eloquent. Even Mingyu couldn't help but give him a thumbs up upon hearing them. Fushi, standing beside him, looked at the eloquent and incessant Taoist, feeling somewhat silent. If I remember correctly, these familiar words seem to have been spoken by him when he persuaded those who were sacred. Now it seems that I don't know when it spread, but now it has been used by my peers. How about it? Would Taoists and children be willing to join our immortal sect? Yun Zhongjuan finally stopped talking and looked at Fu Shi with an eager expression on his face. Persuading the Neng to enter the immortal realm is a great achievement. At the same time, the two Taoist priests, Changxin Yu Chen, who had just remained silent on the side, also looked over. The upright Taoist Yu Chen intentionally or unintentionally shook his sleeve, while the calm Taoist Changxin suddenly had a speck of floating dust in his right hand. Mingyu also reacted to this posture. Good guy, it's really a combination of power and virtue. If you don't agree, you'll probably be forced to understand the Tao. Thinking of this, Mingyu couldn't help but recall that unforgettable past. In fact, their posture is not difficult to understand. In today's wilderness, those who first enter the Great Road and obtain the certification of the Great Luo Golden Immortal are called Great Powers, the one who creates the main road or walks at the forefront of the road is called the Taoist. Da Neng and Dao Zhu are not realms, but honorifics. This is the recognition and respect of the Hong Huang Holy Spirit towards the beings who enter and break the path. For the heavenly way, each great power cultivates a great avenue that is a good supplement to the three thousand paths of the heavenly way, and every powerful person joining the immortal and demon factions adds a powerful guardian to the heavenly Tao. The recognition of great power and its inherent fortune will also invisibly promote the improvement of the heavenly way and accelerate it into a chaotic order. And the powerful often carry their own arrogance and are not willing to join the heavenly way camp, the teachings passed down by the immortal and demonic realms are only partially unknown, and most great beings do not accept them. They would rather believe in themselves. Because the sanctity of slaying corpses and cultivating demons in the Tao heart join the heavenly Tao camp, most of their realms are also Tai golden immortals. Especially for those powerful beings who have gone through a long time, the birth of the heavenly way came later than them. Why should they be placed under the heavenly way? As a result, the heavenly Tao forces do not possess many powerful individuals, far fewer than the three tribes. This is still the result of many sacred cultivation and enlightenment methods in the camp breaking through the great Luo. So every native superpower is the object of competition between the immortal and demon realms. In fact, we have signed a contract between heaven and earth through the persuasion of a powerful envoy named Nuxi. Seeing Fu Shi not speaking and the other party showing a tendency to use force without joining, Mingyu quickly explained. As soon as the three Taoist priests heard the name En Yushi, they suddenly let out a sigh and stopped drawing their swords and crossbows. Taoist Yu Chen straightened his sleeve robe and raised his sword eyebrows, the Changxing Taoist put away his ups and downs, and his breath became calm by three points, just now, Yun Zhongjuan, who was still looking eager, had a hint of helplessness on his face, Dao said, so both of you joined the Xian Dao because of the female Shi Dao friend. The female Shidao friend is too. Too powerful, right? After holding it for a while, the Taoist in red sighed with a majestic sentence, indicating that there was a story behind it. Before meeting Fushi, the three of them visited no less than twenty blessed places in the cave, except for a few Dong Tian masters in the Taiyi realm who signed a contract between heaven and earth through them the rest of the sacred things were all persuaded by an unnamed powerful figure who claimed to be New Shi and signed a contract between heaven and earth. You should know that there are seven great powers among them, and the one with the highest cultivation even reaches the eighth level of the great Luo heaven. This is not the Dalai Lama, like those black robes before, who have practiced some of the methods of enlightenment. That combat power is solid. 
and it's both sacred and occupying the advantages of the cave, where is it so intimidating? Otherwise, why would he act together with the two Taoist brothers? Even Yun Zhongjuan's words just now were just picking up wisdom from others. He learned from the mouths of those masters of heaven and fortune about the words of the unknown Taoist when persuading them, after several rounds of speculation, I only imitated for seven or eight points. Therefore, the three Taoist priests were truly curious about the woman Shi, whom they had never met before, but they could not help but admire Her Majesty. It only sent an unnamed expert to accomplish something that three people worked together without achieving. Upon hearing Yun Zhongjuan's admiration for his younger sister, the initiator, Taoist Fuxi, simply smiled silently. Only Yu Mingyu, who understood the truth, secretly roast, you see, this is the terrifying aspect of girl control. Sorry, my friends. I'm too busy today and only have one shift. I will make up for it tomorrow, definitely. End of this chapter. Chapter 8 About Updates You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 8 About Updates As Jun Ting is a student party member, sometimes he is busy with his studies. So currently, some daily updates may not have 4,000 words. I will find time to make up for everyone on weekends. Except for 3,000 words, of course, I will gradually save the manuscript and the updates will become stable. Anyway, I apologize to everyone, please bear with me. Wishing you all a prosperous fortune. In addition, if you have any ideas about the storyline and characters in this book, please feel free to leave a comment in the comment section. We look forward to your creativity. End of this chapter. Chapter 9 Invitations from Yun's Hongjin and the Disruption of the Raptor. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 9 Invitations from Yun's Hongjin and the Disruption of the Raptor In the wilderness, there is always respect for the strong, and this is also the lament of the Cloud Lord. But emotion comes from emotion, respect comes from respect, but if we talk about how much frustration the three Taoists feel now, it's just a joke. To cultivate into a great Luo, which of the divine beings ranks among the great powers is not a steadfast Tao heart. They believe that with time, they can also reach such heights. The path has its sequence, and meeting strong thoughts is the normal attitude of the great power of the times. Three Taoist brothers, and this little friend, this place is not far from my Yunxia cave. If you're interested, could you go to my place and let me fulfill my landlord's friendship? Yun Zhongjuan, who instantly cleared his mind, warmly invited him. Fuxi was surprised when he heard these words, Changsheng Taoist Yu Chen Taoist also saw surprise in each other's eyes. Obviously, although they shared their origins with each other, they did not go to their respective caves together. Yun Zhongjuan sent out an invitation, and they couldn't afford to lose their courtesy. So they arched their hands and said in unison, You are inviting us warmly, do we dare not comply? Mingyu quickly bowed, his wings like hands, and bowed to the Lord in the clouds, saying, Thank you for your kindness, senior. Do you dare not obey me? The charming and silly appearance made all the Taoists couldn't help but laugh. Great goodness! Seeing everyone agreeing, Yun Zhongjuan laughed heartily and said, Come with me. After speaking, the gourd at the waist automatically unties and grows in the wind. Yun Zhongjun stood on top of it, without waiting for the crowd, he suddenly broke through the air and left. The remaining Taoist, upon seeing this, still doesn't understand that he is going to have a competition. I found it interesting in my heart, so I also showed my abilities. Taoist Yu Chen had a straightforward temperament and said, I'll take a step first. Then he used his hand as a sword, cut through the void with one finger, and followed suit. The Changsheng Taoist glanced at Fuxi, who gestured for him to go first. I saw a book in the hand of the Changsheng Taoist, and he flipped through it casually. The book stopped on a certain page, and his figure disappeared in place. Fuxi, on the other hand, flipped out the eight trigrams array with his left hand, and the runes circulated. The character, Sun, appeared in the air, and he carried a bright jade to ride the wind. In the blink of an eye, 
he caught up with everyone. In the midst of the wilderness, there is a vast expanse called Cloud Dream. The Yunmeng Days is very vast, as boundless as a vast ocean. From a distance, the water and sky are vast and harmonious. On the east bank of Yunmeng Days, four figures appeared simultaneously. At the sight of Yunmeng Days, Mingyu was a little excited. It was the first time in over 100,000 years that he had seen such a vast expanse of water. He eagerly spread his wings and flew towards Days, soaring freely. From time to time, the two winged wind blows towards the Days, causing ripples on the calm lake surface. Looking at Qinghuan, who was going to have fun again, Fuxi felt a little embarrassed and said, Mingyu has a free and unrestrained nature. Don't be surprised, Taoist friends. Ha ha ha, where and where? Little friend, you have a childlike nature. If you can maintain it, the road ahead will be less bumpy. The three Taoists quickly replied. The higher the cultivation level, the farther the path goes. The more you see it, the more important it is to maintain your original intention and not forget your true nature. To be honest with all my fellow Taoist brothers, I have not returned for nearly 200,000 years since I embarked on the journey and traveled through the wilderness. Looking at the Yunmengs in front of me, this place where I entered the Tao, I remembered the various hardships of seeking the Tao, and Yunzhong Jun was filled with emotions. Walk and walk, fellow Taoist brothers, there is a spiritual root in my cave, which is a bit wonderful. Come with me to taste one or two. Yunzhong Jun is clearly a person of temperament and his emotions come and go quickly. Along the way, my Taoist friend has talked about your cave-like spiritual root no less than five times. I want to see if it's really so wonderful. If my Taoist friend speaks falsely, then it will make me so happy, joked the Changxing Taoist. Taoist Fuxi and Taoist Yuchen nodded in agreement. I will definitely satisfy all the Taoist brothers, Yun Zhongjuan said confidently. He slapped the gourd on his waist, and a red light shot out from the mouth of the gourd. Thousands of miles of clouds and clouds are born on their own, reflecting a small half of the east of cloud dreams. Between the clouds and clouds, there is a gateway to the cave, with immortal energy lingering around. Fushi was about to recall Mingyu, but a sudden change occurred. The originally calm Ozawa suddenly became turbulent with a burst of cloud water vapor surging towards the east of Yunmeng, accompanied by rolling thunder. Mingyu, who was enjoying himself, quickly returned to Fuxi's side. In the midst of the clouds, a large black dragon head was pressed down, its horns thick and powerful, coming with a fierce force. Who are you? How did you come to our dragon clan territory? The black dragon's voice shook like thunder. Yunzhong Jun was disturbed and his anger was suppressed. He came to the clouds and said, I, Yunzhong Jun, have been living here for tens of thousands of years and have never heard of this being a territory of the dragon clan. Why did you come to bother me, Taoist friend? Humph. It's true that no dragon tribe came here before, but now that my king has arrived, this is our tribe's territory. Black Dragon spoke again his words extremely domineering, the cave in my king's temple is not bad. It happens to be moved to the bottom of this lake and used as my king's dragon palace. You should leave quickly, otherwise don't blame me for lowering the thunder to kill you. Yunzhong Jun saw that the black dragon was going to forcibly occupy the blessed land of the cave at the slightest disagreement. Even if he knew about the tyranny of the dragon clan, he was furious enough. Without further ado, as soon as I slapped the gourd, red sand sprayed out from the gourd's mouth and headed straight towards the black dragon. The clay figurine still has three parts of fire, let alone the Luo Jin Xian. Bold. The black dragon consciously spared the lives of all the Taoists, which is a great kindness. Seeing that he not only did not leave, but also took action against him, he was really unaware of whether to live or die. The black dragon bared its teeth and waved its claws, its dark scales resembling armor, and countless thunderbolts like countless electric snakes, spitting out apricots and facing the red sand in the sky. 
The electric snake had not yet intersected with the red sand, and Chang Shengdo on the east bank of Yunmeng waved his sleeve and inserted countless thunderbolts into it. He also couldn't stand the tyranny of Black Dragon. The vast expanse of red sand was unstoppable, pouring instantly onto the Black Dragon. At first, the Black Dragon did not resist at all. He was confident that the dragon scale could defend like divine armor. But soon he changed his color, and this red sand actually killed his soul. The black dragon quickly spat out a dragon ball, which emitted a brilliant light, capturing the three souls and seven souls. For a moment, the sky was filled with red sand that he couldn't bear. A sword light struck, carrying endless killing intent, and directly struck the dragon ball, causing cracks to appear on the ball. The sword eyebrows of Taoist Yuchen stood up, and the stars shimmered with cold light. Roar! The dragon ball has been broken, more serious than the enchantment of red sand. The black dragon emitted waves of dragon chants in pain. The sky was filled with red sand like maggots attached to bones, and once again, the black dragon could only summon endless clouds and water. The water of Yunmeng days, also summoned by it, turned into a huge water rushing up into the sky, blocking the red sand. A, can, character text suddenly appeared on the top of the faucet, and the faucet instantly turned to attack the black dragon. Black dragon looked at the east bank of Yunmeng, furious. Quickly activate the supernatural powers and scatter the water. Mingyu looked at the black dragon in the air and deeply admired the opponent's courage. Inviting the four great powers in one breath is really a fierce dragon. The Cloud Lord patted the gourd again, and the gourd suddenly turned into the size of a mountain and collided with the Black Dragon. The Dragon Clan has always been known for its strong physical strength, but at this moment, when it was hit by a gourd, the Black Dragon only felt its muscles and bones broken, its five internal organs shattered, and its huge body fell directly into the Yunmeng Lake, causing a huge wave. The other two chapters are still being discussed and will be published later. I will never break my promise to you. End of this chapter. Chapter 10 Shouldn't be really Zenyuanzi, right? You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 10 Shouldn't it really be Zhen Yuanzi after the Black Dragon fell into the Yunmeng days, it shed its true form, transformed into a human form, and rushed out of the water. Black hair, black armor, black gun, red eyes, and chaotic aura. He worshipped dragon balls and used them to once again pull the water of Yunmeng's lake into nine faucets. The water tap is a hundred zhang long, and under the traction of the dragon ball, it resembles a real dragon, emitting waves of dragon chants and directly rushing towards the east bank of Yunmeng. Afterwards, Black Dragon wielded his spear and pierced through thousands of red sand, killing the Cloud Lord. Yunzhong Jun remained calm and unhurried, lifting the gourd and aiming its mouth at the black dragon. Despite the immeasurable wind disaster, he still managed to dispel its divine soul. The black dragon does not dodge or dodge, allowing the wind and disaster to harm it. Its long spear remains, piercing directly at the lord in the clouds. Just as Mingyu thought that the black dragon was going to burn both the jade and the stone, the Black Dragon released his spear and carried a thousand thunderbolts to stab the Cloud Lord. My body is in the opposite direction, with one hand cutting open the void, wanting to escape. Obviously, Black Dragon is not foolish. He knew he was dead, how could he walk all the way to Black? But how could the three Taoist priests on the east bank of Yunmengs let him escape? The nine waters were cut off by Taoist Yuchen with his sword, and the dragon ball was shattered by the sword energy, the Changsheng Taoist took out a book and secured the black dragon spear, Fushi swung a circle with his left hand, threw out the formation, and directly stumbled the black dragon who was about to escape. Then, the rune suddenly appeared, trapping the black dragon. Yun Zhongjuan seized the opportunity and aimed the gourd at the black dragon. A strong suction appeared at the gourd's mouth, and the black dragon was taken in. Then seal the gourd and vigorously shake it three times. The black dragon's body in the gourd was shattered, leaving only three souls and seven souls, 
as well as the immortal true spirit trapped inside. Yun Zhongjuan laughed heartily and said, I didn't expect the dragon clan to become the first living creature I have included in this gourd. Quick! Quick! He did not actually kill the black dragon. Because every true dragon and the dragon clan that reaches the realm of Dala will leave a soul lamp in the dragon clan's 10,000 dragons hall. Once the black dragon dies, the dragon clan will know that there may be a fatal danger. Although the dragon clan has many great abilities, they must not die in vain at the hands of outsiders, otherwise it will be a situation of endless death. Especially the real dragon. Dragon nature is inherently lustful, and most of the dragon bloodlines within the dragon clan are not pure enough. Pure blood real dragons are rare, and the dragon clan attaches great importance to every real dragon. Whenever a real dragon accidentally falls, it will inevitably cause a vibration among the dragon clan. Ten thousand dragons emerge from the East China Sea, and the murderer will be slaughtered before being returned. Less than absolutely necessary, there is no divine way to provoke the true dragon of the dragon clan in the wilderness. This is all the majesty of the dragon clan. So although he has already formed a cause and effect relationship with the dragon clan, Yun Zhongjuan really dares not kill the black dragon now, which means facing endless pursuit from the dragon clan. Although the immortal sect will protect the cloud lord, he feels that he should remain calm for a while and observe the changes. Yun Zhongjuan tied the gourd back to his waist and came to the east bank of Yunmengs to meet the various Taoist priests. The Changsheng Taoist handed out his spear and said to Yun Zhongjuan, I believe that my Taoist friend's spiritual treasure is insufficient. Although this long spear is only a congenital inferior item, its advantage lies in being an attacking spiritual treasure, which is just right to defend against enemies. My Taoist friend also has some additional means. If it weren't for the help of the three Taoist brothers, I wouldn't have been able to capture that black dragon, let alone seize the spiritual treasure. I must never accept it. Yun Zhong Jun quickly evaded. The black dragon incident, after all, has a causal relationship with the dragon clan. Our dojo is not here, and the dragon clan is not easy to find us. However, our Taoist friend Dong Tian is still in this Yunmeng days. In case of any trouble, having an additional spiritual treasure can also help defend against the enemy. Yu Chen Daoist persuades Dao. Yu Chen, you are right. You can accept it, Dao Yu. Fushi Daoist also advised him to accept it. Anyway, I'll have the audacity to accept it, Yun Zhongjuan pondered and finally accepted the long spear. The Changsheng Taoist pondered for a moment and said, there's no need to worry too much. At the moment when the black dragon appeared, I used a spiritual treasure to deceive this place, in addition, the black dragon has not died, and now a great calamity is approaching. The heavenly machine is already in chaos. If it were not for the treasure, it would be difficult for the ancestors of the non-dragon clan to personally deduce it upon hearing this, several people also temporarily let go of their worries. In that case, that would be much better. After all, the Neng can go out, and the time is calculated in thousands of years. When the dragon clan reacts, they don't even know when. Yun Zhong Jun, who had just obtained an innate spiritual treasure, looked at the Changsheng Taoist with envy on his face Dao said, Friend Dao, what a profound blessing. Not everyone can cover up the mysteries of heaven, either they have strong cultivation, like the ancestors of the dragon clan, either carry the finest innate spiritual treasures or even innate treasures. The immortal Taoist clearly expresses that he has a top-dot-notch innate spiritual treasure. There are only a few innate treasures, all in the hands of ancestors with names and surnames. People do not believe that the Changsheng Taoist has innate treasures, which is too scary. I think it's that book. The three Taoists had not noticed it before and only regarded it as an innate top-dot-grade spiritual treasure. Even the Taoist Yu Chen, who had always remained indifferent to Ling Bao, had a hint of envy in his eyes. The great Tao contained in the top-dot-grade innate spiritual treasure is of great help to the realization of the Tao and the verification of one's own abilities. 
most of them have the effect of suppressing qi, and he has not yet obtained them. With food at home, Fushi, who was calm in his heart, became much more calm, and his qin was also among the best. The Changxing Taoist secretly breathed a sigh of relief when he saw everyone's attitude. The temptation of being a top dot quality innate spiritual treasure was too great, and he had to be cautious. And when Mingyu heard what the Changxing Taoist had said, combined with the divine powers he had previously used in the book, he felt more and more like the one from the Wuzhuang Temple, isn't this really Zenyuanzi? Mingyu turned her gaze to the other two, secretly contemplating their true identities. Yunzhong Jun. Red clothed, enthusiastic, Ling Bao is a gourd, which is quite worthy, but what kind of ghost is home in Yunmeng Day's Yunxia Dong Tian? Yu Chen Taoist. Straightforward in temperament, capable of matching swordsmanship, and whose name is also related, but what is your envious gaze like? Isn't that Ling Bao duo duo known as the Ling Bao Heavenly Sovereign? Wait, there are rumors in his past life that most of his spiritual treasures were bestowed by the Daoist ancestors, as well as obtained from the Fenbao Cliff. It shouldn't be true, right? Ling Bao Heavenly Sovereign doesn't have Ling Bao. Is the moral Heavenly Sovereign still moral or immoral? Shouldn't Yuanshir Tianzuan also not be Yuanshir? The more Mingyu thinks, the more likely she feels. Fushi and Nyuwa each had a vest for Feng Shi and Nyu Shi. It is reasonable for other familiar deities to have an identity they are not familiar with in an era that does not belong to them. After all, it is those ancestors who dominate this era today. And compared to those ancestors, they are still weak, and the next era will be theirs. By the way, which era do I belong to? Mingyu's thoughts drifted unconsciously. What are you thinking? Fushi lightly tapped Mingyu's head, pulling his thoughts back to reality. I'm thinking when I can catch up with the pace of the great god. Mingyu blurted out and debuted. Upon hearing these words, the three Taoist priests, Yuchen Changsheng and Yun Zhongjuan, burst out laughing and openly stated that Mingyu has a heart for the way. Fushi rolled his eyelids, but did not strike Mingyu. He just said, I am looking forward to this day. I heard Mingyu chuckle foolishly. Regardless of whether what Fushi said was true or not, he regarded it as his encouragement. Ladies and gentlemen, we have nothing to do now. Let's wait and enter the cave. Yun Zhong Jun finally remembered the theme of this trip and opened the door of the cave first, making gestures, please. Good. Yu Chen was in front, Changsheng was in the center, and Fushi Mingyu was behind. Everyone entered the Yunxia cave in sequence. There is one more chapter, hand typing, end of this chapter.